This video will be about the dorsal column pathway and with this we start our discussion on the tracks of CNS. So in the coming videos inshallah I will be discussing about the ascending tracks which are the sensory tracks and the descending tracks which is the motor system tract. So we begin with the discussion on dorsal column pathway in this video. So I have drawn here a bunch of diagrams to make you really understand it. We have to start with the basics. The first point about the dorsal column pathway is that it's a sensory tract and therefore it involves the sensory system. And secondly, it's an ascending tract, which is quite obvious. That is, we it is a tract which is involved in several sensations, most predominantly the touch sensation. So the tract, what is the use of such a tract or a pathway? It is because of the dorsal column pathway that we can identify and localize when someone touches us. So the pathway which starts from a touch up to the central nervous system, up to our brains, that entire pathway constitutes the dorsal column pathway. Now, why does it have its name? Why do we call it the dorsal column? Let's understand here with this example. So let's take the case of touch. Let's say someone has touched you at this point on the dorsum of the hand. What happens here is that at the point of contact, there are going to be sensory receptors or touch receptors, which I have depicted here on the left by this blue dot. So the blue dot re represents our sensory receptors. Now from the sensory receptors, what these receptors do is they will convert the mechanical vibration due to produced due to the touch into electrical impulses and they will activate the nerve fibers which are present nearby. So the nerve fibers are activated. So here we have our receptor and this is the first nerve fiber which is getting activated. So the nerve fibers will send impulses and they get activated, action potentials are generated. Now these nerve fibers they will travel all the way from our hand, they will enter into the arm and finally they will enter into the spinal cord. So this structure which I have drawn here is actually the spinal cord. Now there are a few things which you need to know about the spinal cord. This is actually a cross-section of the spinal cord. So spinal cord has two ends or two roots. So th this is our posterior part of spinal cord and this is our anterior part. So the anterior end is the motor root or the motor root which is involved with the transmission of motor fibers. So motor fibers leave the spinal cord through the anterior root, whereas the posterior root is actually the sensory root through which the sensory fibers, all the sensory fibers enter the spinal cord through the posterior root. So these fibers, they will enter the spinal cord and then they will ascend upwards and reach the middle. This is just an introduction. I'll go into further details in this video itself. And then what happens is that these neurons, they will, the nucleus of these neurons are actually present in the medulla. So here we have our axons. And at the medulla, we have the nucleus. This corresponds to the nucleus of our first neuron. What happens here is that at the level of medulla, they will synapse and a new neuron will arise or our second neuron will start. So here our nucleus has, uh, here our neurons have synapsed and now the second neuron gets activated and it will transmit impulses. This second neuron will again continue to ascend and then it will reach the level of thalamus. As I've said, I will go once more into the detail in this video itself so this is just an introduction and the second neuron ends at the thalamus so the nucleus of this second neuron corresponds or is present at the level of thalamus now here another synapse occurs and now because of the synapse the third neuron is activated so that neuron will start from the thalamus that will again ascend itself and that will end at the uh, gray matter or that will end at the cortex to be more precise the sensory cortex this is actually in rough the brief description of the dorsal column pathway. So the important point why I have drawn this is to show you the three levels of neuron. Our first neuron is what we call as the first order neuron. The neuron which is which is present from the receptor up to the level of medulla. That is our first order neuron or our first neuron. The second neuron goes by the name second order neuron. And the third one which ends at the sensory cortex is our third order neuron. This concept of order of neurons is very important and this is applicable to all the tracks which we'll learn in the further videos hopefully. So that's just an introduction and now we go into our actual topic proper. So what is the dorsal column pathway? For every pathway, for every pathway we'll have our discussion. For every sensory pathway we'll start the discussions with the sensations carried. Then we discuss about the receptors then about the first order neuron, the second order neuron, and finally about the third order neuron. So let's begin with the discussion on the dorsal column pathway. The sensations I have said, the most important sensation is a fine touch sensation, but that's not the only sensation which is carried by the dorsal column pathway. It's also responsible for tactile localization. What is tactile localization? Tactile localization basically means if someone touches you at a point, you know that at which part of the body they have touched. 
which means in other words you are able to localize the touch that ability is called as tactile localization that is actually due to the dorsal column pathway then the pressure sensation we have the vibration sensation all of these sensations are carried out by the dorsal column pathway we also have the proprioception and the two point discrimination what is meant by two point discrimination as the term as the term suggests if you are getting touched on two different points by two objects you are able to discriminate between those two objects you perceive them as two different sensation and not as a single sensation that is the two point discrimination so what is the importance if the dorsal column pathway is injured if that is injured it means that you will lose your fine touch you will not be able to localize if someone touches you even if you can perceive some sense of touch you will not be able to localize exactly where you are being touched and you lose your uh, pressure sensation vibrations and two point discrimination will be lost so that's about the dorsal column pathway now we move on to the path of receptor there are three receptors which are the beginning point of this pathway and they are all actually mechanical receptors i have drawn two of them the first one is a pacinian corpuscle we we just have to know their name the second one is the meissner's corpuscle and in addition to that we also have a meckel's corpuscle so all of these are actually touch or uh, pressure receptors which will convert their duty is to convert the touch into electrical impulses and they will stimulate the neurons of the first order neurons so the first order neurons are stimulated and these first order neurons the action potentials in their nerves are stimulated and what happens these first order neurons will ascend from the point and they will enter into the vertebral column and enter into the spinal cord through the posterior root and then what happens so they have entered the spinal cord through the posterior root this constitutes our first order neuron right these fibers they are actually categorized into different categories there is an a a alpha a beta uh, b fibers c fibers and so on this categorization is based on their speed of conduction and on their myelination for the dorsal column pathway the first order neuron is actually a beta fibers so they are the first order neurons and these neurons as i have said they will enter the spinal cord through the posterior root so the posterior root is also called as the dorsal root so i have said this is the posterior part this is the anterior part similarly it also has another name that is it is the dorsal part whereas the anterior part is the ventral part right so this is also called as the dorsal root of spinal cord now does the nerve fiber synapse at the spinal cord no that's a very important point to note in the dorsal column pathway there are no synapses at the level of spinal cord instead the first order neurons they enter the spinal cord dorsally and then they will ascend upwards they will pass from the spinal cord and enter into the brain stem at the level of medulla which means that they are ascending upwards through the column of spinal cord that is why they are called as the dorsal column pathway or the dorsal column fibers that is at the dorsally in the spinal cord they will ascend upward through into the column of spinal cord and they will reach the level of medulla it is at the level of medulla where they synapse so that is where the nucleus of the first order neurons are ending and that's where the second order neurons are starting now what is the name of this nucleus so there are two nuclei which will uh, constitute the beginning of a second order neuron in the medulla they are also present in the posterior part of medulla the first one is a nucleus gracilis which is present medially then we have the nucleus cuneatus which is present laterally now from here two types of fibers arise that is second order neuron are actually two types one is the fibers which go into the cerebellum and then there are the fibers which ascend upwards so two types of fibers origin once again from here the first fibers cerebellum will be on laterally right cerebellum will be on both sides of the medulla so there will be fibers which go to both the medulla on same side and on the opposite side that is one group of fibers the second group of fibers are those which ascend upwards they are actually part of the dorsal column they will go from the medulla and go upwards into the sensory cortex what happens to these fibers these fibers will actually cross at the level of medulla which is a very important point that is they will ascend through the spinal cord without without synapsing then they will enter the medulla they will synapse there and then they will ascend they will cross to the opposite side of medulla and then ascend upwards through the pons through the midbrain and finally synapse or end at the thalamus uh, so these fibers constitute the second order neuron these fibers go together in like a bundle right so all the fibers go like a bundle and this bundle is known as medial lemniscus so what is medial lemniscus medial lemniscus are the second order neurons which arise from the medulla from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus which will carry the sensation of dorsal column from the medulla up to the level of thalamus that bundle is called as the medial lemniscus
no the thalamus contains several nuclei there is a dorsal nuclei ventral nuclei a ventral anterior ventral posterior and so on there are so many nucleus in the thalamus where exactly do the dorsal column pathway end the dorsal column pathway ends at the ventral posterior nucleus so our third neural neuron starts at the ventral posterior nucleus of thalamus these terms and these order of neurons are extremely important everything about neurology is actually neuroanatomy these are all neuroanatomical terms everything about neurology even in internal medicine the half of neurology is neuroanatomy you have to be good at neuroanatomy to understand the tracks and neurology in general so from the thalamus the third order neuron will arise and that will ascend without crossing any further and they will end at the level of sensory cortex so here we have our sensory cortex which will finally process all the information and give us the sensations so to identify all of these sensations you need a complete intact tract from the level of receptor up to the level of sensory cortex if there is a damage anywhere around along this pathway you will not identify or you will not be able to recognize the sensations which we have said so far so that's about it and an important point which it gives us is that due to the crossing at the level of medulla the left side of the body recognizes the right side of sensation that is what is important clinically so what it means is that the left sided lesion if there is a lesion on the left side of the tract above the level of medulla the sensations are lost on the opposite side that is sensations are lost on right side so that's why we are learning these uh, tracks because we need to identify where the lesion is in when a neurological case comes up to us so that's about the dorsal column pathway we need to know two more details and that will complete our information on dorsal column pathway here i have drawn a section of spinal cord and here i have drawn a human now what we need to understand is that the sensations enter the spinal cord at different levels for example if someone touches a person at the level of the feet the fibers will enter the sacral spinal cord okay whereas if it occurs if the sensations involve the groin or the inguinal region these fibers will enter at the lumbar region of spinal cord from their side to the entry of spinal cord they will enter through the lumbar part if their touch receptors are stimulated at the level of abdomen or thorax they will enter into the thoracic part of spinal cord and finally if it involves the upper limb the receptors from the upper limb they end up in the cervical part of spinal cord so those are the four levels of spinal cord and through which the fibers enter depending upon the uh, place where they are stimulated now how are these fibers arranged at the spinal cord to understand that we have drawn here this diagram so this is the our top or our region of head and this is the part which is the bottom or the region of our foot when a person has a sensation around his feet or on his leg the fibers enter the sacral segment right the first order neuron enter the sacral spinal cord now as we ascend upwards what happens to the what happens when the fibers of inguinal region now enter the fibers of inguinal region will enter through the lumbar part of spinal cord and when they enter what happens is that they will push the sacral fibers medially okay and as we go further upwards when the fibers enter at the thoracic level these thoracic fibers will further push the lumbar and sacral fibers medially and similarly if we go further upwards that is the fibers of sensation the fibers carrying sensations from the upper limb will enter at the level of cervical spinal cord and this cervical spinal fibers will push all the other fibers medially so by the time we reach the medulla or medulla is at the top topmost part right at the level of medulla what happens is that most medially we will have our sacral fibers or fibers from lower part of the body followed by the lumbar thoracic and cervical fibers with the cervical fibers present lateral most at the spinal cord and at the entry of medulla so if we were to draw a diagrammatic representation of fibers what we can find is that the most medially we'll have our sacral fibers then we'll have our lumbar fibers then the thoracic fibers and finally we'll have laterally we'll have our cervical fibers the other point is this weird diagram which i have drawn i will have to explain this the gray color here this is actually the sensory cortex whereas these uh, brown colors they are actually our body parts so let me label them first before describing this is actually our leg this is body this is our trunk these are our hands this looks like a face and it is indeed the face these are our eyes the huge one is our lips and here we have our teeth and the final one the bottom one is our tongue now what is this diagram and what has these organ parts got to do with our sensory cortex what really happens is that every part in our body has 
a point of representation in the cerebral cortex this is an important thing to understand it's not that the fibers uh, end randomly at the sensory cortex no the fibers have exact specific locations where they are going to end so all the fibers fr that arise from the leg that is all the sensory fibers from the leg actually end up at the medial side of the cortex so this is our medial side and this is our lateral side they do not end up at the lateral side in other words we can say that there is a definite distribution and representation of each part on the sensory cortex and this representation is represented by this diagram and that diagram is known as the sensory homunculus the other point to note is that we will find that we have not drawn here a normal face here, right? The face looks abnormal, the lips are really large and the tongue is also large. Why have you drawn like that? It is because the distribution of body parts on the sensory cortex is proportion to the number of receptors or sensory receptors on those regions. In simple words, in our body, our face, lips and tongue has a large number of sensory receptors and because of that fact they have large area of distribution in our sensory cortex that is why when we draw the sensory homunculus our face and lips are, are drawn in a very large and abnormal manner that is to showcase the or represent the large number of receptors and due to that the large area of distribution in the sensory cortex so that's about sensory homunculus and i guess that's enough for the first fact which we have discussed which is the dorsal column pathway in the next videos, we'll be discussing about the other sensory tracks. Mm -hmm.